Okay, so I want to give you the notes for um, nomenclature of ionic compounds. We'll call them type one. So remember um, on your large white piece of paper, um, get the pen going. Uh, in color blue. So on that large um, white piece of paper, you made five columns. You had molecules here. And here you have ionic bonds type one. And this is the ones that we did uh, in class. So here's where I'm going to have you write some notes of how to name those. So um, I'm going to use another screen, but I expect you to put all that information down here as a tool. So we'll start off with an example. Um, and as I mentioned, there are uh, many techniques of how to do nomenclature, and I'm going to show you uh, two of them that we went through in class as a review, and then introduce a third one, which will make it very easy, but I expect you to be able to use all three of them. So we'll do it through examples. Uh, we have aluminum plus fluorine. All right, and if you look at the periodic table, um, you'll find aluminum to be, let me see myself what the atomic number is since I don't have it out, uh, atomic number of uh, 13 and fluorine to have the atomic number of 9. So if you look at your periodic table, you will see that uh, aluminum should have three valence electrons, one, two, three, north, south, east. And fluorine has seven, okay? Six, seven. And when you look at these two, you need to remember that um, probably aluminum, which has three, it's going to lose its three electrons because um, when it's less than four, they usually lose their electrons. And fluorine, on the other hand, over here, it's probably going to gain um, electrons because it already has seven. It wants to have eight. Um, and so with that said, it's probably going to grab one. So in this case, like we did in class, we have four, three locations where aluminum can lose its electrons. And it's going to give one of those electrons to fluorine. So bam, that electron goes there. Fluorine has now gained an electron, now has a negative charge. It's happy, OK? This means that aluminum has a plus one charge because it just lost one. But it still needs to lose these two. So what are we going to do? Well, we can give it another fluorine. And so this electron will move to that fluorine. So now we have yet again aluminum having lost another electron so now it's even more positive with a plus one more plus one and then we can give it another fluorine and we'll give its electron there so in this case here for aluminum to lose all of its electrons there need to be three fluorines okay so with that said, I put a little negative charge for each of them. This one now has lost one more. And our formula is one aluminum. You always write metal first. And then you write the nonmetal. And here we have fluorine. And we have one, two, three fluorines. So it's ALF3. So that's one way that you can do it. Remember, we can do the math way as well. So we have here our element on this side. And here we have the oxidation number. And remember, the oxidation number you can find on your periodic table. And if you haven't written them down yet, I would strongly encourage you to do that. So we know that aluminum has the ability to lose three electrons because it has three electrons in its valence shell. For that reason, it has a plus three charge. We know that we also have fluorine. We can add as many fluorines as we want. Because it has seven electrons in its valence shell, and it wants to gain one more, its oxidation is going to be minus one. 
And remember, we need to get to zero over here. So how can we get to zero with the math? Well, we have right now a plus three charge with a minus negative one charge. We still need uh, two more negative one charges. In other words, we need to have two more fluorines to equal that zero. And if you do the count, we have one aluminum, three fluorines, and that's going to get us right back to that um, formula right there. All right. So now I'm going to show you a third way, and I'm going to use the next screen to toggle back. And this is the one that all kids love. But having said that, um, you can only, yeah, no, well, I won't, I won't introduce that one quite yet. Oh, no, I will. Okay, I will. So here's how it works. Aluminum, you still need to know the valence electrons and fluorine. Excuse me, you still need to know the oxidation number. This has an oxidation number of positive 3. This one has an oxidation of negative 1. And what we do is we literally swap the numbers. So it's called a cross swap. That means that the one from the fluorine goes underneath here, but since we don't ever use one, and the three from the aluminum goes to the fluorine. We call that the cross swap, okay? And this actually gets um, more important when, uh, when these numbers are a little bit difficult. But you put the oxidation numbers on top, and you just have these two, you can actually cross swap them and, and get your, your actual formula. So that's a third way of doing it, very easy, but I do expect you to be able to know how to do uh, those. Last part is actually naming these. These are easier than molecules to name. You always say the metal first, so this is aluminum, and then you say fluoride, okay? You keep that ide in there. You do not do prefixes like you do in the molecules, okay? You simply, so no prefixes. You simply name the metal and the nonmetal, but always keep an ide to the end. And that should give you enough information to finish off your homework. All right, till next time.